fellow Earth scientists, B here. Today, we're going to look at some of the cycles that are responsible for sustaining life on Earth. In our last lesson, we learned that the Earth system is all of the natural processes that happen and interact on Earth. This includes storms forming high in the atmosphere, ocean currents traveling the hydrosphere, magma churning deep in the geosphere, and millions of forms of life thriving in the biosphere. The Earth system is a closed system. This means that the material cycle between the atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and biosphere within the Earth system, but they don't really leave the system. The materials change form over time, but generally we aren't gaining or losing matter on Earth. It's simply always in the process of changing shape, and that includes the matter that you and I are made of. Yet, the Earth's population is growing at an unprecedented rate. More people are alive now than ever before. In fact, just since the year 1900, the world's population has nearly quadrupled. But if the Earth is a closed system and we aren't gaining new matter, then where is the stuff that all these people are made of coming from? And for that matter, what are we really made of? Today, we'll answer these questions and more. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain what happens in the carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and water cycles, relate these cycles to Earth's spheres and the states of matter, and explain the importance of each cycle to Earth's biosphere. Let's get started! First, let's take a look at what carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus really are. These materials are all examples of elements. That means they're a pure material made of only one kind of atom. On the other hand, water is a compound. That means it's made of multiple different kinds of elements bonded together. In the case of water, it's made of two atoms of the element hydrogen and one atom of the element oxygen. If you've ever heard water called H2O, that's what those letters stand for. So carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and water are each pretty different substances, but they have one essential thing in common. They're basically some of the fundamental building blocks of life. Each of these substances is part of enabling life on Earth while also playing an important role in shaping all of Earth's other spheres too. However, as you know, matter on Earth is constantly changing and moving. So let's take a look at the cycles these important materials are involved in. Carbon is the most basic ingredient of life on Earth. In fact, all of Earth's living things are called carbon-based life forms because this element is in every one of our cells. So, how does carbon move through the Earth's closed system? The carbon cycle is the process through which carbon constantly moves through the Earth's spheres. Let's take a closer look at what happens in the carbon cycle. First, there are a few ways that carbon makes its way into our atmosphere. A carbon-based gas called carbon dioxide is a byproduct from burning fuel like in cars and power plants. The process of making this gas is called combustion. Carbon also enters the atmosphere when humans and animals breathe. The cells within our bodies create carbon dioxide as a waste product. Then we breathe this gas out and into the atmosphere during a process called respiration. So 
How does this carbon-based gas get taken out of the air? Well, while animals breathe in oxygen, plants breathe in carbon dioxide. They take this gas in along with sunlight and water to create food during the process of photosynthesis. Then, other living things eat these plants and take some of this carbon into their own bodies. Eventually, when living things like plants and animals die, they break down during another process called decomposition. When living things decompose, the carbon within their bodies is released into the soil, air, and water. Some of it is even trapped deep underground and becomes the gas and oil that's burned during combustion. Some of it is absorbed by plants once more during photosynthesis, and some of it returns to the air we breathe. The steps in this cycle can happen in different orders, but together they keep carbon moving through the Earth system. Nitrogen is the basis for the proteins in our bodies as well as our DNA. Like carbon, nitrogen also circulates through the Earth's spheres in a process called the nitrogen cycle. In addition to being an important ingredient in living things, nitrogen is also the most common gas in Earth's atmosphere. The first stage in the nitrogen cycle is fixation which is when nitrogen in the atmosphere moves into the soil. There are a few ways this happens, like when lightning strikes the ground, or when tiny bacteria in the soil pull in nitrogen from the air. Once the nitrogen is in the soil, it undergoes mineralization. During this process, nitrogen is converted from organic material like decomposing plants and animals into non-living rocks and minerals. Nitrogen in the soil can also undergo the process of nitrification. This process converts the nitrogen into a form that plants can take in and use. In fact, nitrogen in this stage is a main ingredient in plant fertilizer. So, how do you think animals get the nitrogen they need if plants are the ones that take it out of the soil? You guessed it. We eat the plants to take in nitrogen, just like in the carbon cycle. However, some microorganisms need nitrogen just like plants and animals do. That's why the next stage is immobilization, in which microorganisms in the soil take in nitrogen. This step keeps the level of nitrogen in the soil balanced. Once the nitrogen has been taken in by microorganisms, it undergoes another process called denitrification. This is when microorganisms convert the nitrogen they've taken in back into gas that goes into the atmosphere. Then the process starts over. Phosphorus is another essential element needed by all living things. It's in our bones, teeth, and in our DNA. The phosphorus cycle is the process through which phosphorus moves through Earth's spheres. Like the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle, the phosphorus cycle involves both living and non-living things. However, Unlike these other cycles, the phosphorus cycle doesn't involve the atmosphere too much because phosphorus doesn't generally enter the gaseous state of matter. The rocks on Earth's surface have tons of phosphorus in them. In the first step of the phosphorus cycle, these rocks are slowly broken apart by forces like wind and rain. This process is called weathering. Then, the phosphorus from the rocks mixes into soil in the ground. After that, the phosphorus is absorbed by plants. Even underwater plants absorb phosphorus from the sea floor. So, how do you think phosphorus gets from plants to animals, including us? 
you might be starting to see a pattern here. Once the phosphorus has been absorbed by the plants, it also continues to move through the biosphere when animals eat these plants. Then, when these plants and animals die and decompose, the phosphorus they took in returns to the soil and water. Eventually, this phosphorus will be compressed back into rocks, and the cycle starts again. The last cycle we'll look at in this lesson is the water cycle. The water cycle is the process through which water moves through the Earth's spheres. Like the other cycles we've covered, the water cycle also involves both living and non-living things. However, unlike the other cycles, this one is a little more visible in our everyday lives. When the water on Earth's surface warms up enough, it evaporates or turns to water vapor in the atmosphere. Then, as it cools down, it condensates back into liquid droplets. This can happen on the ground as dew on plants or high in the atmosphere when water vapor condenses into clouds. When the water falls from these clouds in a form like rain or snow, it's called precipitation. This takes the water from the atmosphere back down to ground level. After it falls back to the ground, this water either sinks into underground reservoirs or it flows into streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans through a process called collection. Then it evaporates again, continuing the cycle. In the meantime, water also moves through living organisms, since it's essential to all life on Earth, just like carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Plants and animals, including you and I, need all of these elements and compounds to live. Lucky for us, they move through all of Earth's spheres, including the biosphere, in different amounts all the time. Although the amount of matter on Earth doesn't really change, its form and location does. Right now, since the Earth's population is bigger than ever before, we can assume that more carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and water are currently in the biosphere than ever before too. And eventually, since Earth is a closed system, all of those elements and compounds will move back through the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere in their own cycles. So, let's recap what we've learned today. You now know that carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and water move in cycles. These cycles take these materials through each of Earth's different spheres. At different points, these materials are found in both living and non-living things and in different states of matter. And carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and water are all essential to life on Earth. Hey, be sure to check out the engaging games and thought-provoking extension activities to get ready for our next lesson. And in the meantime, remember, in Earth science, as in life, you rock! See you next time! Hey, hey.